Hey everyone, this is Matt Ziegler at the Southwest Environmental Finance Center. And today I wanted to demonstrate to you how to take your disinfection byproduct samples using these uh, sample bottles right here. So we're at our DBP location and distribution according to our sampling plan. I have my sample tap here and I am going to go ahead and start flushing. And the purpose of flushing is to get that main line water uh, so that we're sampling what's out in the main line. I'm also going to remember to go ahead and take uh, my chlorine residual. We want to make sure that we have a good free residual out there to show that we're operating under normal conditions. And I have my free DPD reagent right there. So as I'm flushing, I can go ahead and get some of my paperwork done. I'm going to go ahead and pull out my sample bottles. And so I have my two HAA bottles right there. These are for accurate labs. And so they use two 60 mil VOA vials. Okay, and we can tell that they're VOA vials because they have this rubber top on it. And you can go ahead and, and open it. And you can see that we have that rubber top. And that's because the lab isn't going to open these bottles when they analyze it. They're going to go ahead and put a, a needle in there and pull out the sample without introducing it to the air. And so we have two bottles. You know, in case one gets broken or messed up, we also have an, another one that they can analyze. From. And so whenever you see a top like this, you want to make sure to collect the sample with zero head space, no air bubbles. So we've gone ahead and we've flushed. We're going to reduce our sample stream. We've grabbed our chlorine residual. Okay, we wanted this stream to be about a pencil width thick, or about the width of my pinky there. I'm going to go ahead, I have both my sample bottles here. I'm going to go ahead and open this bottle here, and I'm going to fill it up. Now, there isn't any additional preservative you need to add to this bottle. All the preservative is already in there. And since this is the HAA bottle, you have ammonium chloride in there. Okay, so I'm going to fill it almost all the way up, and I want to get what's called a, a reverse meniscus, a bubble of water up there at the top. And so what I'm going to do is use my lid, and I'm going to fill it up the rest of the way and get that nice curve of, of water at the top. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to cap it, and then I'm going to tap it and I'm going to look for bubbles. All right, I don't see any. I'm going to go ahead and fill up my next bottle. This is for HAA still. And, and the glass is brown on these to protect the sample from the sunlight. We don't want that sunlight to break down any of those haloacetic acid compounds. I get my reverse meniscus. Again, I tap it and see if there's any bubbles there. Okay, I also have uh, my two bottles for trihalomethanes here. Okay, and these are preserved with sodium thiosulfite. That takes out the chlorine. Again, these are 40 mil VOA vials. And I'm going to go ahead and fill it up. Add a little bit of extra water. Get that nice bubble of water on top. And then go ahead and tap it. And tap it. Now, if I have some bubbles in there, I'm going to go ahead and open it up again. Add a little bit more water. And then recap it. Okay, I've got one more bottle to fill for my other THM. And normally I wouldn't want to drop my cap like that, but just because I'm demoing it for you guys today, that's what happens. You're not likely to get any VOCs or DDPs up off the ground. Um, but if you're concerned if you drop the cap, you will have to go back and get some more sample bottles. 
All right, so that one's all filled. So that's just the demo on how you take disinfection byproducts of the dual sample set, THMs and HAA buttons.